So we've talked about the first problem for heat pumps, that the temperature doesn't rise that fast when you go underground, and so unless you go very deep, your temperatures are low enough that you're not going to get a high Carnot efficiency, and therefore it's very inefficient at getting electricity out. But going deep means drilling really deep holes, which could be expensive. But now let's look at the second problem, which is heat transfer. Now to illustrate this, let's have an idea of how a simple type of geothermal no, well could work. So the simplest possible setup is what's called closed loop. So you might have a hole in the ground that you've drilled, and you might have um, a metal casing in the middle of it, like it's shown here, and you pump water down the outside and it flows back up at the inside. So the idea would be as the water flows down the outside, heat is conducted in from the rocks around it, so the water gets hotter and hotter, then it flows back up the middle as nice hot water, um, and then comes up to the surface and can be used for you know, heating your building or generating electricity or whatever you want. Now the trouble is the heat has to get into the water that's flowing, and enough heat has to get into it. Now when you first drill a hole, the rocks immediately around the hole are going to be pretty hot, whatever temperature you'd expect for their depth, so about 25 degrees for every kilometre down you go down. But as soon as you start pumping water past them, that heat's going to start leaking out of the rocks and into the water. You're going to be cooling the rocks down. So what you'd expect to get is the temperature right next to your borehole is going to start dropping very quickly and then eventually even out. Simply because the rocks near your borehole, your drilling hole, are cooling down as you run water past them. You can't take heat out of something for very long before you cool it down. What this means is a simple setup like this, like a single hole um, with water flowing down the outside and up the inside, typically generates, uh, if, if it's several kilometers deep, may only generate a few tens of kilowatts of heat. And that will drop off rapidly as time goes on. A few tens of kilowatts is you know, basically about what you get from solar cells on someone's roof. It's not very much for a, a hole that's kilometers deep. Now, the heat source for geothermal power is, of course, the heat in the middle of the Earth. And the heat in the middle of the Earth actually comes from the decay of radioactive elements. When the Earth was formed, rocks piled together and got very hot, but that's leaked away long ago. What's keeping the middle of the Earth hot now is particularly uranium decaying in all the thousands of kilometers of rock deep under the surface, and the heat from that slowly leaks outwards. There is a steady flux of heat working its way from the core of the Earth outwards from all this uranium, but that's only a pathetic 0.065 watts per square meter, uh, which is pretty miserable. I mean, compare that with a thousand watts per square meter you get from sunlight, and you can see that the actual geothermal flux coming through one square meter of the Earth's surface is very tiny. You know that you put your hand on the ground unless you're in a volcanic region, it doesn't feel hot. There is that 0.065 watts per meter squared coming up through the ground, but that's you know, not enough to melt snow or even be noticeable to feel. Unless, of course, you're in a volcanic region like this one over here. Also, the conductivity of rocks is very poor. So here's what happens. You drill your hole, and the rocks near the hole get cold. Heat is still coming up, that pathetic uh, amount of heat leaking up from the centre of the earth, and some of that heat will conduct through the rocks towards your borehole. And so, in the short run, you get lots of heat out because the rocks near your borehole are, co are hot, but they rapidly cool down, and then you have to rely on the slow conduction of heat through the rocks to replenish the heat to the rocks near here, and then allow them to keep heating the water up. And because rocks are poor conductors of heat, this does not happen very easily, and it's, it propagates through the rocks very slowly, and so it limits dramatically how much heat you can actually get out. Now you can do the maths of this, it's a diffusion equation for those who know about these things. You uh, get look at heat goes from hot regions to slow regions, and the rate at which it goes depends on the temperature gradient, and inversely on the conductivity of the rock. But because most rock has pretty low conductivity, and the temperature gradients are not that high, it's a very slow flow of heat. And that really limits the amount of power you can get out of a, a geothermal well. So a single hole, kilometres deep, may only generate you know, 50 to 100 kilowatts. So that's 
pretty pathetic. I mean, that's uh, what you get from uh, you know, a few solar panels on people's roofs. Of course, it's providing that power 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but still, you had to drill a hole many kilometers deep to get this. So a lot of people are asking, is there some way to get more heat out? Just drilling a simple hole and pumping water down up is not going to do it. You're going to need to somehow get in touch with more of the rock to be able to allow the heat to flow more easily. So the current geothermal plants do this by being built in hot spring areas, so the rock is very hot and very close to the surface, but also they pick regions where there's lots of water flowing through cracks in the rock. And so that's what helps things happen. The water flows around, it might flow over here and pick up some heat and then flow over there and supply it to your pipe. So the natural water flowing around in the cracks in the rock allows you to harvest the heat from a bigger area. But these locations are rare. What can you do if you just wanted to drill some random location. So there have been a number of proposals for how to do this, and there are startup companies working on several of these things. One is called Open Loop, or Enhanced Geothermal. And the basic idea here is you drill multiple holes. You might have a hole in the middle where you pump the cold water down, and then you have holes on the outside where you pump hot water up, and then you rely on cracks in the rock. So the water flows through the network of cracks until it comes back up again. There may be natural cracks in the rock. You might pick a nice porous rock where there are natural holes for water to flow through, but more likely you would uh, use the technique known as fracking, which is used widely by the gas industry, which is where you uh, crack open more things, maybe by injecting high-pressure water into the rocks to crack them open. And so the idea is that now you're drawing the heat from a much larger area, not just from the rocks near one pipe, but from the rocks near all these cracks, they can all supply heat to the water. So it sounds wonderful. The technique has been well used in the oil and gas industries. Uh, and that's responsible for why the US is now a major oil exporter. Uh, again, what, what they do is they produce cracks in the uh, rock to help the oil flow out. So it's basically the same process and it's been very well researched. Now when people have tried this, you get energy outputs at the few megawatt electricity levels. So that's much more than the few hundred kilowatts we're talking about for just a single pipe. But there are drawbacks. I mean, normally we'll have to frack, which means explosions underground, which makes tremors and things and tends to be unpopular with the locals. Uh, but another problem is that most of the water tends to flow down one or two big cracks. So you're not getting the huge network of cracks where you can transfer heat from rock into the water. You might only get two, which is actually not that much better than a single pipe that went horizontally. And also, because your water is flowing in contact with the rocks, you're going to get the various chemicals in the rock coming out into the water, sulfur dioxide and things like this, which is going to make your water corrosive and means you're going to need to have anti-corrosion resistant pipes and have to be very careful about maintenance in your water treatment plant. So there are drawbacks. Because of these drawbacks, some people, some companies, are proposing so-called closed-loop systems. Now, instead of trying to use natural cracks in the rock or create more cracks in the rock and just have the water flowing through the rock, what you might do is drill lots of holes. Um, so you might have the cold water going down here, down a whole bunch of holes and coming up to the side. And now we can do this because drilling systems, again developed for the oil industry, are quite capable of steering when they're underground and drilling rather complicated networks. And again, the oil industry uses this to try and uh, for example, let's say you've got an oil field over there, but you can only drill over here. You might have a drill that goes down and sideways to reach the oil field, or you might have more pipes fanning out within the oil field to extract more of the oil. This is um, being pioneered by the company Evor, and again, what they do is they'll drill a network of holes, and all these holes, the water will stay in the pipes. It won't flow out through the rocks. You're not getting the contamination from other things coming in, but by having lots of pipes and not just one, you can get more heat and they've got a, a pilot plant in Germany producing 60 megawatts of heat and 8 megawatts of electricity, which is you know, much better than the few hundred kilowatts you get from a single pipe. But you had to drill a lot of holes, so the drilling becomes more complicated and hence more expensive. Um, so swings and roundabouts. Some other companies are also thinking of hybrid techniques. This is a slide from XGS Energy Incorporated. What they do is they have a closed loop pipe but what they do is they do some sort of fracking around the pipe 
to open up cracks in the rock, and they fill these cracks with, by pumping some conductive material into it. So the idea is, because you've got these networks of conductive materials all around that, that can conduct the heat in towards your closed-loop pipe. So the idea here is it's closed loop, which means you have the benefit of having the water all trapped, you don't have the toxic chemicals coming in, but you also have the benefit of harvesting heat from a large area by means of this fracking. So these technologies can increase the power from the 50 to 100 kilowatts of just a straight hole in the ground, which only gives you 10 or 20 kilowatts of electricity uh, because of the Carnot limit, up to about 50 megawatts of heat, about 10 megawatts of electricity much better. But there are drawbacks, as we've seen, and 10 megawatts of electricity is still only equivalent to um, two or three big modern wind turbines. More than that in reality, because this geothermal plant can produce power 24 hours a day, whereas wind turbines might only have 30% duty cycle um, capacity factor. But nonetheless, um, for the price of six or seven wind turbines, they will give you the same power on average as one of these geothermal holes, without you needing to drill huge numbers of holes underground. So basically what we've learned is, to make geothermal work, we're going to have to drill holes that need to go deep to get us the Carnot limit, and there need to be multiple holes to allow for uh, overcoming the slow conduction through the rock. So you're going to need lots of holes drilled deep very cheaply, and that's the next challenge.